Hugo Gernsback, born Hugo Gernsbacher, August 16, 1884, died August 19, 1967, was a Luxembourgish American inventor, writer, editor, and magazine publisher, best known for publications including the first science fiction magazine. His contributions to the genre as publisher, although not as a writer, were so significant that, along with the novelists H.G. Wells and Jules Verne, he is sometimes called the father of science fiction. In his honor, annual awards presented at the World Science Fiction Convention are named the Hugos. They were first given in 1953 at the 11th World Science Fiction Convention, and have been awarded every year since 1955. Ralph 1 to 4 C for 1 Plus, by Gernsback, is an early science fiction novel, written as a 12-part serial in Modern Electrics magazine, which Gernsback edited, beginning in April 1911. It was compiled into novel-slash-book form as a monograph in 1925. While it pioneered many ideas found in later science fiction, it has been critically panned for its inept writing. The title itself is a play on words. 1 to 4 C for 1 plus, meaning 1 to 4 C for one another. In the introduction to the first volume of Science Fiction Plus, dated March 1953, Gernsback called for patent reform to give science fiction authors the right to create patents for ideas without having patent models because many of their ideas predated the technical progress needed to develop specifications for their ideas. The introduction referenced the numerous prescient technologies described throughout Ralph 1 to 4 C for 1 Plus. Gernsback had created Modern Electrics which began publication in April 1908. Initially, the magazine was intended to provide mail-order information for radio parks and to promote the amateur radio hobby, but it later became a vehicle for technology-based fiction stories. The first fiction that appeared in the April 1911 issue was Gernsback's previously mentioned serial. The circulation for this magazine increased rapidly, starting at 2000 and increasing to 52,000 in 1911. In 1908, the magazine announced the wireless registry, the listing of radio owners, their call letters, and the type of equipment they owned and how it was operated. The magazine was sold in 1913, and ceased publication in 1914. It then merged with Electrician and Mechanic to become Modern Electrics and Mechanics, the experience Gernsback gained with Modern Electrics led him to introduce Electrical Experimenter magazine in 1913. The Electrical Experimenter was an American technical science magazine that was published monthly. It was established in May 1913 as the successor to Modern Electrics, a combination of the magazine and mail-order catalog that had been published by Gernsback starting in 1908. The Electrical Experimenter continued from May 1913 to July 1920 under that name, focusing on scientific articles about radio, and continued with a broader focus as science and invention until August 1931. The magazine was edited by Hugo Gerns back until March 1929, when the Experimenter Publishing Empire of Sydney and Hugo Gerns back was forced into bankruptcy. After that date it was edited by Arthur H. Lynch, under the editorship of Gernsback, it also published some early science fiction. He published several of his own stories in the magazine starting in 1915, and encouraged others through 1916 editorial arguing that a real electrical experimenter, worthy of the name, must have imagination and a vision for the future. Between August 1917 and July 1919, Nikola Tesla wrote five articles for the magazine, and also published parts of his autobiography and segments in several issues in 1919. In 1925, Gernsback dedicated the entire August issue to science fiction, called the Scientific Fiction Number. This led directly to the publication of Amazing Stories. Amazing Stories is an American science fiction magazine launched in April 1926 by Gernsback's Experimenter Publishing. It was the first magazine devoted solely to science fiction. Science fiction stories had made regular appearances in other magazines, including some published by Gernsback, but Amazing helped define and launch a new genre of pulp fiction. As of 2018, Amazing has been published, with some interruptions, for 92 years, going through half dozen owners and many editors as it struggled to be profitable. Gernsback was forced into bankruptcy and lost control of the magazine in 1929. In 1938 it was purchased by Ziff Davis, who hired Raymond A. Palmer as editor. Palmer made the magazine successful though it was not regarded as a quality magazine within the science fiction community. 
In the late 1940s amazing presented as fact stories about the shaver mystery, the lurid mythos that explained accidents and disaster as the work of robots named Eros, which led to dramatically increased circulation but widespread ridicule. Amazing switched to a digest size format in 1953, shortly before the end of the pulp magazine era. It was sold to Saul Cohen's Universal Publishing Company in 1965, which filled it with reprinted stories but did not pay a reprint fee to the authors, creating a conflict with the newly formed science fiction writers of America. Ted White took over as editor in 1969, eliminated the reprints and made the magazine respect it again. Amazing was nominated for the prestigious Hugo Award three times during his tenure in the 1970s. Several other owners attempted to create a modern incarnation of the magazine in the following decades, but publication was suspended after the March 2005 issue. A new incarnation appeared in July 2012 as an online magazine. Print publication resumed with the fall 2018 issue. Gernsback's initial editorial approach was to blend instruction with entertainment. He believed science fiction could educate readers. His audience rapidly showed a preference for implausible adventures, and the movement away from Gernsback's idealism accelerated when the magazine changed hands in 1929. Despite this, Gernsback had an enormous impact on the field. The creation of a specialist magazine for science fiction spawned an entire genre publishing industry. The letter columns in Amazing, where fans could make contact with each other, led to the formation of science fiction fandom, which in turn had a strong influence on the development of the field. Writers whose first story was published in the magazine include John W. Campbell, Isaac Asimov, Herd Fast, Ursula K. Le Guin, Roger Zelozny, and Thomas M. Dish. Overall, though, Amazing itself was rarely an influential magazine within the genre after the 1920s. Some critics have commented that by ghettoizing science fiction, Gernsback harmed its literary growth, but this viewpoint has been countered by the argument that science fiction needed an independent market to develop and to reach its potential. In an editorial in Wonder Stories June 1929, Gernsback coins the term science fiction. Wonder Welton, a juvenile novel by Friedrich Wilhelm Mader published in 1911 whose crew of young astronauts visit Mars then travel to Alpha Centauri at faster than light speeds. John Davies Beersford, born 17th March 1873, died 2nd February 1947, was an English writer, now remembered for his early science fiction and some short stories in the horror story and ghost story genres. Beersford was a great admirer of H.G. Wells, and wrote the first critical study of Wells in 1915. The Hamptonshire Wonder is a 1911 science fiction novel by Beersford. It is one of the first novels to involve the wonder kind. The child in it, Victor Stott, is the son of a famous cricket player. This origin is perhaps a reference to H.G. Wells's father Joseph Wells. The novel concerns his progress from infant to almost preternaturally brilliant child. Victor Stott is subtly deformed to allow for his powerful brain. One prominent, and unpleasant, character is the local minister. As Beersford's father was a minister, and Beersford was himself partially disabled, some see autobiographical aspects to the story. However this is unproven. What is more concrete is that the story of Christian Heinrich Heineken was an inspiration for the story. Whether the biography of that child prodigy was accurate or not, the Lübeck prodigy is mentioned in the work. In the original version, the progressionist ideas of Henry Bergson on evolution were a significant influence. Revolution, published 1921, is Beersford's study of the socialist revolution in England in the not-too-distant future. Garrett Putnam Service, born March 24, 1851, died May 25, 1929, was an American astronomer, popularizer of astronomy, and early science fiction writer. His second deluge, published in 1912, is an updating of the biblical account of the Great Flood where the watery nebula, instead of God, inundates the earth. Edgar Rice Burroughs, born September 1, 1875, died March 19, 1950, was an American fiction writer best known for his celebrated and prolific output in the adventure and science fiction genres. A Princess of Mars is a science fantasy novel by Burroughs, the first of his Barsoom series. It was first serialized in the pulp magazine All Story Magazine, as Under the Moons of Mars, from February to July, 1912. 
full of swordplay and daring feats. The novel is considered a classic example of 20th century pulp fiction. It is also a seminal instance of the planetary romance, a subgenre of science fantasy that became highly popular in the decades following its publication. Its early chapters also contain elements of the Western. The story is set on Mars, imagined as a dying planet with a harsh desert environment. This vision of Mars was based on the work of the astronomer Percival Lowell, whose ideas were widely popularized in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The Barsoom series inspired a number of well-known 20th century science fiction writers, including Jack Vance, Ray Bradbury, Arthur C. Clarke, Robert A. Heinlein, and John Norman. The series was also inspirational for many scientists in the fields of space exploration and the search for extraterrestrial life, including Carl Sagan, who read A Princess of Mars when he was a child. His The Moon Made is a fantasy novel belonging to the Lost World subgenre. It was written in three parts. Part 1 was begun in June 1922 under the title The Moon Maid. Part 2 was begun in 1919 under the title Under the Red Flag, later read titled The Moon Men. Part 3 was titled The Red Hawk, 1925. As evident from its name, Under the Red Flag was originally set in contemporary Soviet Russia, with the Bolsheviks as villains. As this was not popular with the publishers, Burroughs transferred it to a science fictional setting, with the evil communist-like Kalkars taking over the moon in the first part, and then the Earth in the second part, with the help of the renegade Earthmen, and being finally overthrown in the third part. Also the tourists, villains of Pirates of Venus, are clearly modeled on the Russian communists. The book version was first published by A. C. McClurg on February 6, 1926, under the title The Moon Maid, though it was shortened from the serial. The three parts have been published in varying combinations and under varying titles since 1926. Burroughs, The Mastermind of Mars is a science fantasy novel, the sixth of his Barsoom series. Burroughs, working titles for the novel were A Weird Adventure on Mars and Bad Barrow of Barsoom. It was first published in the magazine Amazing Stories Annual Volume 1, on July 15, 1927. The first book edition was published by A. C. McClurg in March, 1928. Burroughs had been unable to place the novel in his standard, higher-paying markets like the Munzee magazines and the Street and Smith line. Some critics have speculated the publishers were put off by its satirical treatment of religious fundamentalists. He eventually sold it to publisher Hugo Gerns back for $1,250. Only a third of the rate paid by magazines like Argosy All Story, where the previous book in the series had first appeared. Gerns back chose the novel's final title and made it the cover feature in his newest magazine. Hard to run magazines and hard to place novels. Looks like the new genre of pulp fiction was having growing pains. Except for some, most had to be outside the field to have any measure of success, as we will find out in the next episode. See you then.